how people in Bronze Age develop indigo is a complete mystery today. Now, I'm not saying that aliens made it, quite the contrary. But this is such a massive mystery. If you haven't heard of this, you're in for a ride. Before chemistry was a thing, to dye something, say, red, you would find something else that is red, dissolve it in water, and dunk your fabric in it. But indigo is a different class of dyes altogether. First of all, it's not blue, and it has to undergo a chemical change while applying in order to fix it to fabric. Not only that, but the process of making it is such an elegantly precarious dance of chemistry, with steps that seemingly lead you away from the end result, indigo had no business of existing 6,000 years ago. Natural indigo is derived from leaves of several plants, none of which are blue. These plants are rich in a glycoside called indican. It's a molecule that can be converted to indoxyl, which itself is an indigo precursor. Step one is to release indican from the plants. Submerge the leaves in water, warmed up to about 9200 degrees Fahrenheit, 30 to 40 degrees Celsius, which starts the hydrolysis by natural enzymes. Then you weigh the plants down and wait. How long? Depends, but somewhere between two and four days should be enough. Step two, sift out all the particles and change the pH of the liquid to about 10. Except you're in the Bronze Age and you have no litmus paper or alkaline chemicals. Shit, you don't even know what pH is. So you just add the right quantity of wood ash going by the feel of the liquid between your fingers. That's all you got. Why you'd want to do that? No idea. But if you got it right, you will have made endoxyl. Step three, convert that to leucoindigo, which is the dye you want, but you wouldn't know it because it's yellow green, not blue. More on that in a second. You need to introduce oxygen to it by beating the liquid, except there is a problem. Your dye also reacts with oxygen and it creates indigotin. This is bad because indigotin is not soluble in water. You get this beautiful blue powder suspended in the liquid, but it doesn't stick to the fabric. So now you gotta convert that back to leuco indigo. Step four, collect urine for weeks. If you've been a good boy collecting and occasionally stirring urine in a vat until it turned rancid, which, I mean, why wouldn't you do it, right? You will have produced enough ammonia to act as your reduction agent. Step five, slowly stir in just the right amount of this urine into the blue liquid without making any bubbles. This converts indicotin back to leucoindigo. But if you make bubbles, you will have ruined your batch. Without a chemistry set, the color, feel, smell, and taste of this liquid are the only ways to tell if your vat is properly reduced. At this point, you're actually almost there, but you probably feel like you wasted your time. The blue powder is now gone, the liquid turned olive green, and you just tasted piss. Step six, heat up the vat. You want temperature about 100 to 120 degrees, which is 38 to 48 degrees Celsius. Then you wanna wash the fabric with neutral to alkaline water. You don't wanna go below seven. And then slowly dip it in while it's still wet. This prevents the pH from crashing and keeps the oxygen out of the liquid. After a few minutes, simply pull the fabric out slowly so as not to disturb the vat and let it react with oxygen. Before your eyes, the fabric will go from olive green to deep blue. And this is why indigo is resistant to fading. It's fixed to the fabric while it oxidizes. And this shit drives me nuts. Why anyone would even try this process without knowing what the end result might be is the single greatest mystery that keeps me up at night. Why did they store the piss? Why did they make it go rancid while they did all this other shit on the side? How did they figure out the right proportions and timing and temperatures? Why pick the green leaves to make something blue? Why? Nothing here makes sense, yet somehow 6,000 years ago, someone did it and now I can't sleep at night.